Otherwise, our party must be first in studying. You must study. If you are a socialist, you must study. You must study. That's why we start all the great programs, literacy, so that we can bring knowledge, true knowledge is power. Hey peeps, it's your girl Blessed D. Gaza Diva and welcome back to the Blessed D. Gaza Diva channel and any opportunity I have to speak about this great man called Michael Manley, I will not let it pass up. People, I'm going to read a story about when Michael Manley took up the initiative for free education. Yes, that same thing that causes people to transcend. That same thing that causes people to think outside of the box. That same thing that causes politicians to not be able to have us bogged down, to have us confined, to have us restricted. Yeah, that same thing. Anyway, people, when we get back, going to look into it. We're going to talk about it in the comment section. Anyway, people, let's kick it. A flashback to Michael Manley's free education system. Education is often seen as a great equalizer in which people from low-income families can enter career fields that would have otherwise been impossible. For thousands of Jamaicans on May 2, 1973, when the country's fourth Prime Minister, Michael Manley, introduced the Free Education Initiative, this was the ticket many financially challenged people were waiting for to create a better life for themselves and their families. You must read the mother book called Manley and the New Jamaican. Who should find a way to read it? Is you are right it for politics of change? Is you are right it for to give you wisdom and understanding? The program included free secondary education in all grant-aided secondary schools and free education for qualified Jamaicans to enter a tertiary institution. One such person, medical practitioner and consultant surgeon, Dr. Ray Fraser told the Jamaica Observer that he is forever grateful for the opportunity to attend the University of West Indies under Manley's initiative. Read it! Make group bite and somebody read it and don't discuss it because you must be first in study. Knowledge is power. In those days, my mother couldn't afford it at all. Two of us went to university at the time. She was a single mother. My father had died years before, so free education came in for us and for many Jamaicans at the most opportune time or appropriate time, he said. Fraser continued, it allows students from the rural inner city and the lower class to enter university and those people who were given free education in the 1970s. They were the ones who eventually became the backbone even now of the economy. I mean doctors, lawyers, heads of corporations, all of those people were trained in the 1970s and were beneficiaries of free education so it had to have had a positive effect. Explaining that he is a Manchester native by birth, both moved to Kingston and attended Kingston College, Dr. Fraser stated that while it was a bit daunting when he just started university, it was also thrilling because of the different Caribbean cultures he was introduced to. The university at the time was a great melting pot. It was a time when you had social awareness. It was a time when you had youngsters identifying themselves ideologically and philosophically. I remember meeting for the first time students from other Caribbean islands and discussing culture and politics, he noted, stating that the only way the country was able to move forward was to have an educated population, Fraser said. You have to train your people to get the maximum out of them. The more you educate them, the better the whole development of the society. Partly funded by earnings from the freshly in Introduced bauxite, Levy, the program was staunchly opposed by members of the upper class who believed Manley was grossly mismanaging the economy, thinking the prime minister had become a communist. Therefore, in 1980, the Jamaica Labour Party won the general election. In 1986, they announced a cess on university students, eventually ending the free education program. Another individual who benefited from the policy was New York paralegal Howard DaCosta. DaCosta told the Sunday Observer that if free education wasn't an option, he would have likely taken out a loan to attend the College of Arts, Science and Technology cast, now known as the University of Technology of Jamaica. Whether or not it was free, I would have gone 
I would have made some arrangements because that was the underlying precept that I would go. Firstly, I lived in Clarendon with my family. My father had died and so my mother was bringing us up by herself. The other brother had already gone to college to Michael and had already graduated. It was just a natural progression that I would have gone to college as well, DeCosta stated, adding that he studied telecommunications and worked in Jamaica for over five years before migrating, arguing that free education education at the tertiary level should be reconsidered my last word is for the role of leadership first of all the leadership of socialism must walk in humility humility must be humble must be humble must always be humble there is no place for arrogance in the party that i lead and anybody that is arrogant over the people must get out of leadership. The only one that is fit to lead is the one that walk hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder, equal with the people, loving with the people. That's why I don't want no big flashy motor car. I don't want nobody in my party go with flashy clothes. I dress simple. And I'm driving a simple little car. I'm bed driving a simple little car. Because we must walk with the people. The day we think we're bigger than the people, we have no business to lead. Socialism walks in humility with the people. If you're a socialist, you must have love and concern. And if you're a leader, you must stay close to the people. I said to the leaders of socialism, stay close to the people. When the people are worried and unhappy, don't run away from them. Stay close like a shepherd. Give them love. Give them care. That is socialism. The leader in socialism must know so that he can explain. He must understand so that he can lead. He must inspire by example. And above all, he must have integrity. Integrity. Integrity integrity only honesty can lead the people in socialism the costa proposed that the government should also provide affordable loans and grants for struggling students it is important because the impact on the economy going forward it is a generational thing it boasts the economy boast productivity he told the Sunday Observer. At the same time, it was very appropriate. It did its job. It allowed a significant number of bright, intelligent Jamaicans to move forward who themselves contributed to the nation's building. People, there you have it. I tell you, the Jamaica Labour Party, crap, crap, crap. My granny tell me about them. They do not believe in growth. They do not believe in de development. And you better believe upper echelon lace the Jamaica Labour Party, and to this day, it is the same model. The model has not changed. They don't believe in education. They don't believe in educating our people. They believe that education belongs to a particular ilk of people. It belongs to a particular group. And if it comes outside of that group, then it's going to be exposed and people are going to become brilliant and people are going to become bright. So that can happen. Michael Manley, the best, most stalwart Prime Minister Jamaica had and will ever see in the existence of the country. I know I might probably not live on to see what comes in the future, but I can tell you what will happen will never outdo what he did. You hear what the argument they made? Oh, Jamaica was coming a communist. Now, people, I tell people all the time I come in contact with, education is the key to a lot of things. Any young woman, any young man, Education is the key to a lot of things. And you see, anybody who does not want you to be educated, you run from that person. Anybody who does not want you to be educated or a nation to become brilliant, disassociate yourself from that person. The government existing, ruling party, you heard they were the ones who opposed and the rich people were saying that poor people, Pickney, are get on and that Manly is stupid. 
Manly had a vision for this country. He loved people because it's only when you love people, you can decide to invest in them. Investing in education has nothing to do with a $50 flower bag. Investing in education has nothing to do with a car. Investing in education has nothing to do with a house. Investing in education has to do with the full embodiment and development of somebody's psyche. And the minute you see somebody is interested and vested in your investment of education, you don't need to question or ask how that person feels about you. Therefore, my comrades, let us build together. And I call upon you now, in the name of the Father, in the name of God, in the name of Allah, in the name of Jehovah, in the name of Jah. Anyway, people, you can tell me your thoughts down below in the comment section about what the article said about Michael Manley. Even if you have your own experiences, some of you are older who are my subscribers, and you can tell me now down below in the comment section. As per usual, we'll have a discussion. If you've not yet subscribed to my channel, please hit notification bell. And if you've not yet smashed the like button on this video, smash the like button and send this out. I'm out.